Hello, my great and wonderful people. I welcome you all once again to our today's episode of this program. Now, we, the Nation Voice, the voice when they reveal the secret is when they said the government and the politicians that they said they cover. And today, we get this video when it be say we found and we want me we quit review to Una for the things when it be say still they go on for our country, Nigeria. And before then, in case not the first time when it be say they hear about us on this channel, be this, we say you are highly welcome. I beg do us a favor now. You see that subscribe button, press them. And the small bell within the around, press them as well so that anytime we will take upload any video again, you know what they suffer to look for. It will only come to you like a message. And our prayer be said, they say we want to be said to support us on the channel. Now they say we want God with the same people. When will they support you for everything when you go, when you put your hands to do? In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I will leave Una now and make Una watch this video and I will come back for the conclusion. It is important you understand that a man cannot give what he does not have. The whole, the whole reason why we are where we are today in Nigeria is because we elected a man that is incompetent. People can paint it left, right and center. In terms of governance, Buhari has already crashed. He knows he has already crashed. Nobody that has traveled all over the world, including Ghana and other West African countries, can look, with what, look at what is happening in those countries and come back here and say he's proud of what Buhari is doing in Nigeria. The issue of insecurity, remember the president, one of the reasons why people supported the president was that he's going to be so tough on issues of insecurity, right? But the president lost it. The killing all over the country. Today, 28 of the states in the country have been taken over by bandits. The president has no solution. And let me tell you, the political stubbornness of the president is another problem. He thinks he's doing Nigerian people a favor. Nigerian people are the ones doing him a favor and rehabilitating him. He's not doing us any favor because what he's offering is below the belt. Now you keep service chiefs that their tenure have expired. You keep them. The question I keep asking, is it that the service chiefs are so fantastic? Is it that they have been able to secure parts of the country? The answer is no. When you keep incompetent people, when you cannot reject them, I keep asking myself, why are you punishing Nigerian people? Because whatever security for that are using is not working. And that's why you see the audacity of the Fulani herdsmen that is killing and raping across all parts of the country. That's why you see the bandits that have taken almost 28 parts of 28 states in the country. And that's why you see the Boko Haram that has returned back and then go about killing people the way they like. And when you are done with all these things, you go to the issue of the economy. He talks about making the economy strong, which was one of the reasons the people supported him. He made the economy to, to go into total mess. Today you can see ordinary shake with the with the oil price. The dollar, the naira is chasing the dollar at 400 naira to a dollar because the president have no economic idea. He's running the Koboko economies. These things are outdated. It is he can pan a bit people into land without having any agenda. The only solution to this whole problem is that we keep begging the president. It's not a must. You must be president. The country have rehabilitated you for the last five years. Just go. Let, let, let your deputy, any other person take over. You can't be punishing the people because whatever the president is doing is not working. And remember the primary responsibility of governance under Section 14 is the protection of lives and property. And I ask President Mohamed Buhari, have you been able to fulfill that constitutional obligation of protecting just ordinary protection of lives and property? Look at the boo-boo here all over the country. And you see that he doesn't even know what is happening around him. And then we elected you as a president and a group of cabal and a group of people hijacked the presidency and then they are running the country without a constitutional mandate. You see some of them went to Germany to go and negotiate for Nigeria and Siemens, it's the chief of staff, and all those kind of funny things he starts hearing. The, the chief, national security advisor and the chief of staff are fighting on one hand, the service chiefs are all divided. How can you get development in this kind of situation? And the monies that he thinks he's budgeting for this project are ending up in private pocket. Where is the road? Where is the water? Where is the security? Where? And today, we keep saying, to avoid a situation whereby the nation is going to enter a state of health emergency, because we know the president does not have the capacity. Just look at ordinary Ghana and South Africa. They have banned flights coming from Italy, fr flights coming from China, flights coming from France and UK. What is big deal about that? Those high, uh, you know, coronavirus prone areas. You stop flights from coming from there because we know the president doesn't have the capacity to handle a, any emergency that will, you know, come as a result of this. And that's what we're asking. But he's sitting down because, he, you know, he likes things to go bad before he can act. So, like I said before, the only solution is for the president to step aside. It has been four years of pain. It has been four years of incompetence. It has been four years of a hijacked presidency. He does not have the, uh, the formula. And the greatest, the service he did to the country, which pains me. 
lot than here is a country that used to be united we have been managing our our, our our differences but the president came and drew the line of disunity so wide the appointment he made was lopsided in, in violation of the federal character principle and not like he hired people that are competent there are people that if he has hired competent people will not be complaining whether they are muslim or christian but he hired people that are like him and now they are taking the resources of the country wasting it and the citizens who are paying these tax cannot sleep with two eyes closed this is our money we are the one paying the tax the president does not pay tax apart from serving in them he has never done any work he doesn't know how it, it takes to make money and then people's businesses are running down and you're sitting there calling yourself president just for the fun of calling yourself president but the basic responsibility of governance which is the protection of lives and property as spelled out under section 14 the president cannot do that he's of no use as long as governance in this country is gone and that is what we are asking him that having abused his office having shown manifest incompetence that he should have mercy on nigerian people and step aside and that is why it pains all that a man that cannot run his immediate you know family see the the, the way his wife fights with his uh, uncle and relatives and so on and so forth cannot even control the members of his kitchen cabinet cannot run a republic like nigeria and that's why he said where did they bring this idea of borrowing 22.7 billion dollars from President Mohamed Bari, you want to borrow $22.7 billion you that cannot run this country since five years. So this will be the last dance of chopping so that these people will go and chop this money. And you want people to pay back this money in 20 years' time when most of the people who are part of this borrowing will not even be alive. Generation yet unborn is going to pay for your incompetence. And that is why the opposition says, no, at this juncture, we have to stop you. Because you want to return us back to economic slavery. You want to destroy the gains former President Obasanjo and the government of that time recorded with the Paris Club by reform. And that's why we are asking the lenders for one thing. Or less, the China Asian Bank, the Japanese Development Bank, African Development Bank, all these foreign lenders, they are after Christmas. Or less, they have money to throw away. We have sued them on this particular issue. And we have sued the president. And we are asking the court to set aside this loan request uh, proposal. But if the lenders turn to be for the Christmas and decide to give their money to the president. That if the opposition comes to power in the next three years, God's willing the people entrust us with power in three years' time. We're not going to repay the money because now that the loan process has not been consummated, there's a pending matter in court. You have to respect Nigerian judicial sovereignty and wait for the court to decide on whether the president was right or wrong in his loan, loan request. But if you as a lender, you go and risk your depositor's money by giving it to a man, a government that has been weakened by corruption and incompetence, that is your business. We're not going to repay that money. Your money is going to go down the drain. And that's why we're saying stop it. And apart from stopping it, one of the issues about that loan that is so devastating is that, one, you have a loan request that is frivolous. President Mohamed Buhari, you want to take $500 million. That is about $200 billion, $200 billion that does not belong to you. That belongs to generation yet unborn. And then what gets you to go and repay NTA? Does he, is he listening to himself? You want people, Nigerian people, to allow you to take 200 billion naira to go and repay NTA your propaganda machinery. NTA that you know is not commercially viable because it runs only propaganda for the government. It doesn't aid the views of people from the opposition. So how is NTA that is under government subvention going to repay back 200 billion naira that you want to borrow? So you are so heartless that you want to take 200 billion naira of unborn generation fund and commit your propaganda machinery, the NTA, and then children you're unborn in 20 years and will start paying for what kind of nonsense is that? And that's why you're saying it's frivolous. And so, and also, you want to take 70 billion, about 200 million dollars, to link the data of EFCC and National Identity Management Commission. We're not talking of the data of the banks and the INEC and the police. What data does EFCC have? What data does the National Identity Management uh, Agency that have not fully registered 30% of Nigeria have? And you want to commit 70 billion to link a data, not even generate a data, when the annual budget of the National Identity Management Commission is in the neighborhood of 8 billion. But you use 70 billion to just link, connect, connect it, like banks connect uh, the, the banks up and so on and so forth. So you can see that this is chopping extravaganza. The president is on the last leg of looting. He wants to squander, the, he has already squandered the one that belongs to us, but now he wants to squander the one that belongs to our children. And that is why we're saying no to that kind of recklessness. And apart from that, the federal character principle promotes good governance and equality of appointment and starting of project for the good governance of all parts of the country. How do you formulate a, a, a loan request of almost 10 trillion naira and exclude a huge segment part of the country and majority of the states? And then when the repayment time comes, these people that are excluded will be part of the people that will be repaying a loan that you, that you plunge 
into an uh, unrealistic project. So that is why we're saying stop the loan request. Rework it. If there is need for the loan, let there be spread. And let us look at the economic viability. You don't run a train station that goes to the desert. You don't run a train station that goes to, to, to Niger or a train station that goes to Chad. It doesn't have economic viability. If you run a train station that goes to Kano, that goes to Aba, Port Harcourt, Lagos and so on, it's viable. So you only invest borrowed money in projects that can be able to repay back. But when you invest this money in projects that cannot repay back, you're wasting the, the future of unborn generation. And it is because the president practices what I call Koboko economies. The people around President Mohamed Bari who claims to be economists are home economists. These are people who, score, who, who, who study home economics in primary and secondary school. Paradin has what economy. They don't know anything because if they know the right thing, they will not have advised this government that is already weakened by corruption and incompetence to go and borrow 200 billion naira of future generation money to commit in repairing NTA. How much did it cost to set up big TV stations, including CNN? So to me, the only way out of this is for the president to show mercy. Because the only thing we would have achieved was that if the parliament was competent enough. But in the parliament today, you have what we call political hallelujah boys. These are people who sing hallelujah for the president in the chamber. None of them is man enough to stand up to do the right thing. That is why they considered a loan request without seeing the economic viability report, without doing it item by item. Because they are nothing but political hallelujah boys. And I say that without any atom of respect to them, because that's what they are. And that's what we're saying, that if the parliament was up to their responsibility. The parliament would have commenced impeachment proceedings against the president for gross misconduct. But how do hallelujah boys commence impeachment uh, uh, process against their, their, their master? And that's why we're asking the president, please take the part of one and step aside. The burden is too much on you. You cannot run the republic. Okay. Health wise, you cannot. But in terms of competence, you cannot. In terms of having the economic force, you cannot. And the people you recruited also are people who st studied home economics in primary school and paradigm as economists. They cannot revive the economy of the country. We can only continue to slide into the state of economic and security hiatus and destroying lives. Every day people are dying left, right and center and it looks like the, oh, the only thing the president does, like just the fire, uh, fire outbreak in, in Lagos is, oh, he, he commiserates with the people, he sympathizes with them, the government fronts are this, government with this. That is the only thing. They have, a, they have it in the computer store. Once anything happens in the country, he copies it and pests. So we are begging him to stop these things he's doing, show mercy. At least, if there's any honor left in him, let him take the part of honor and then go so that we we'll remember him for being man and off and honest enough to go when the burden was too much. You mustn't just remain in office just because you want to run, to, to be a president. I tell you, I'm not boasting. I can do a better work than President Mohamed Buhari. So what is giving the Nigerian people is below the bed. And I think this the, uh, leadership uh, incompetence and all this has to end by the president taking the part of honor and resigning. Or the parliament, if they can come out from being political leader, boss, should impeach him. Right, my people. I believe, see, all of us don't watch this video. And uh, we don't want to label this video too much because we know, say, yes, this man don't already see everything. Only one thing we want to try to talk here, not pass, be say, as we don't already be aware now, say, now hallelujah, boys, now we get. Because for the truth, it will be hard for your boy, a person when he be say, you choose to pull for position to come say he won't work against you. Because the reason why your employer, now for him to do what you want to make you do. Now him be the something when he be said the Senate and even the House of uh, Representatives, all of them they do. All the honorables and all the senators, all of them they do. Even that one where they call the AGSO, the Attorney General of the Federation, even the uh, DSS boss, the uh, Chief of Staffs, all of them, just watch the kind of group of people where all of them be. So you will know, say, before this man come into position, he select these people because he know the agenda when he will carry on. So another thing we want to try to talk here, when we know, say, he know what they possible, now he be, may we tell this man, say, make he resign by himself. <laughs> that one is something when we see, say, it not would be possible. May we be honest to ourselves. You know why? Because now we the think say this man in not the work to run for the agenda when he gets when he make and they there in the work perfectly. That is why you will see say if any man from the southeast and southwest stand up tomorrow to say they want to vote against this man, the population when he will stand up to oppose that revolt. It would do much than even the people when they stand up. Because to them, to the Hausa Fulanese, to the Mieti Allah group, 
unto the Hesme and the Boko Haram, this man, he did do marvelous work. Remember when they arrest Showare? He get one man when he be uh, Mr. Ibrahim, when he be the pro Buhari protester, when he tell lead the people, when he protest against DG, when they tell beat up DG that very moment. The time when they be said the interview for AIT, remember what he talk say Buhari they do great job. Say he they do great job, marvelous job. To them, Buhari they do marvelous job. That man when he did uh, Asurok so, he they do the work when he be say he did therefore. Because before he regime, you know they hear say, Hesme don't take over southeast or don't take over southwest, or you don't they see this rampant a uh, 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 highway a uh, roadblock and all that. Now it don't they rampant everywhere. <laughs> So they they, they win within the one they, they get within the one. Now what they say and say you know the work. So may we they tell and say make it resign honorably. That one you know will work. So for us now we will leave unana make una see share on our opinion with us for the coming session. And uh, I want you this moment to really thank each and every one of you now when you be say it day with us up to this moment. The Lord Almighty will bless you. I bet make you not forget to help us share this message because we believe in what they say, information now power. So that our people will first get all this information what they try to pass around. And we would like to hang our boat here. We will see you again when we see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye-bye.